hope you're doing well. Um, I guess I'll start off with a two-part question for you. Um, first part, do you expect Alex Mack to be av- available this Sunday? And the second part, what are the biggest teaching moments for Matt Hennessy after his first start? Okay, so we're going to take, uh, you know, obviously we're going to take Mac all the way to the game. Um, today's practice in a limit based, on a limited basis. Uh, we'll get him out there. You know, obviously he's got to go through all of his protocol stuff and he's going through all that in, in a timely fashion. Um, so he'll be ready to play if he's available and if he can go and if he feels healthy. Um, I do expect him to play. Um, Hennessy, um, a great learning experience for him last week. A way to get out there and get some action, you know, for the first time. There, people forget that this rookie class didn't really have a, a preseason. And for him to get out there and get some real action, get some live bullets and some live some live padded action was a really good, a good experience for him. Um, what's your overall evaluation of the year Dante Fowler has had and how much do you think those injuries kind of set him back maybe early and then also here recently? You know, I'll, just, I'll just be frank and I'll be frank for Dante. It just wasn't good enough uh, for the standard that he's provided for himself or the standard that the Atlanta Falcons have for him. You know, obviously he wants to go out and be a disruptor every single time. He wants to get out to the quarterback and he's not been able to do that enough this year, whether it's been COVID, um, whether it has been injury, whatever the case has been. You know, a lot of things in this business you don't have time for excuses for, and he won't be one of those guys to make excuses. we got to get him going. He's a guy that we have big plans for, and uh, we'll figure out what we can go next with him. d Yeah, Coach, I, um, yeah, just with sticking with Fowler, what, um, you know, the injuries, you know, I know y'all don't want to make excuses for that, but weren't they a factor? Uh, for sure, d you know, but again, you know, my job or his is not to make the excuses. It's for reality to set in where he is as a health standpoint. It's for reality to set in for where he is um, with the ability to go out there and be able to play and make plays. And then at the same time, at always, when you're talking about anything, the standard is the standard. You know, whether you're talking about our team having the ability to try to go get wins or you just being able to go out there and play at your level based on what you can do. And then moving forward, uh, you know, looking at Tampa Bay, uh, what are some of the things that you all can do to try to get two halves together? You had the first half last time and and so forth. What are going to be some of the keys this week to, you know, be able to go with those guys for for the whole 60? You know, for us on defense, we're talking about focus. You know, we lost some focus in the second half, had a couple mental errors. And then again, um, it doesn't really matter who's in there. You know, we talked about the last time making a mistake with some of the people that were out there. Um, we can't make those mistakes no matter who's out there. you got to own your role and you got to play your role. And then on offense, we just got to go out and continue to score. In the second half, they did a great job of coming out, not letting us finish by stopping us on third down. We got to keep the chains moving. We get the third downs, and we got to stay out of those third and extra long situations. Well, hey, coach. Um, you know, in in this last game uh, against Tampa, uh, Antoine Winfield made a big play against Calvin Ridley in the end zone, and I'm curious just what your evaluation of of him was maybe when he was coming out of the draft and and getting a chance to kind of see some film on him this season. You know, Winfield is a very impressive young man. He's a very good player. You know, he has the ability to play some safety, some nickel, um, so he can move and give you some really versatility. Um, His ability to go out there and play and make plays on the football is similar to a guy that we played against a long time ago and his dad. Um, His dad has definitely been a guy that's been in his ear. You can see it in his play and how he goes after the ball, his ability to affect the game. Um, He's a really good football player. He had a really high evaluation for us. You know, and he's doing nothing but show it every 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 play out there and every game out there this year with Tampa. And then, you know, how yeah, I know that I know that Matt is somebody who's been in this league for a long time, accomplished, you know, as as much as you really can as a quarterback. But how impressed are you with his ability to respond these last two games after the way that he played in Los Angeles? You know, he's come back with two of probably his best games of the season. You know, that doesn't shock me. I think we talked about this after the bad game in Los Angeles. Um, it was the reason that I can be so frank with you guys about him just not playing well. Uh, when I told you guys our best player didn't play his best, I meant it. Um, and then he came back and he bounced back and he became back to his normal self. And when he's his normal self, he goes to his process. He's able to go out there and eliminate all distractions. He's able to go out there and try to find a way to win each game. And we haven't been able to do that. So Matt's still not satisfied. He's still not happy until he can find a way to get the win. Jason? Hey, Raheem. Uh, sticking with Matt, uh, just from this whole season, you know, uh, going into week 17 here, uh, from a leadership standpoint, how would you say Matt Ryan has navigated this season with his teammates? You know, obviously, he is the one of the biggest leaders on our football team, along with him, Julio, you know, Alex Mack on the offense. And they got a couple of leadership figures on there. But when you're talking about being a quarterback, you're automatically thrust into a leadership role. 
and he sets his leadership by example and he sets his leadership by the standard that he makes these guys hold up to on the practice field and i think those are the most important parts of his leadership you know julio is kind of our connector he connects everybody he's there has the ability to talk to anybody in any space and i know you guys don't get a chance to see that enough about julio but matt is the guy that absolutely takes people to the practice field and absolutely holds the standard to a higher level um, than even his coaches you know nobody prepares like matt nobody comes in the building like matt nobody wants to get to the game and have the ability to try to win like matt and then alex mack um you know this is uh, he's got a, obviously the contract coming up or it ends after this this game what has he meant to this franchise over the last five years that you've gotten to get to know him you know i was really fortunate to get him in 2016 and when he came here he immediately became a voice for our franchise i remember him being a part of the recruiting process to get muhammad sanu you know, he had just signed his contract with us. He was in the building the same day. Um, we were walking through. It was myself, Cal Shanahan, who had just came with him from Cleveland and knew exactly who he was and what he meant to that team and the leadership that he would bring to us. And he had already started the recruiting trail to get other people and to talk to other people to, uh, in order to come join our football team. And he talked to Muhammad that day. And he talked about how great it was to be able to come out there and go into a meeting and listen to Cal Shanahan say what's going to happen and then go out there and happen in the game day. And what he's done throughout the years from that is nothing but go out and play in a Super Bowl, why he, why he had a broken leg. He's uh, played every, he played a bunch of games for us and he's been able to go out there and throw his body around and be just a all, all around pro. He's been a guy that's been able to go out there and lead our old line and lead those guys into being uh, a really good unit. And he got a lot of young players that are able to set great examples too um, for a long time. George? Yeah, hey Raheem, what's the uh, key going to be to get the running game going on uh against these guys and their and the challenges their personnel present to you guys. You know, George, we talked about it a little bit last week and how we want to get our run game going versus Kansas City. And we had a couple of different wrinkles in it with some opening up of the receivers, some possible to run alerts, um, to move some people outside of the box. This team in Tampa presents different challenges. They got some big people inside. They got a front eight that can just dominate you and use their hands and shed blocks and get off. You got to work these guys. You got to grind them. You got to keep trying to stay after it. You know, we'll have probably have more attempts than we have success. But it is what it is. Sometimes you got to hit yourself right across the face and hit it in the fan and see what you can get and try to get out of that thing and make some plays. Thank you. Allison? Hey, Coach. Kind of a, a little bit of a big picture here. With the new year just a couple of days away, what will you remember the most about this 2020 season, not focusing on the wins and the losses, just being able to complete a season with all the changes and everything and during a pandemic? What will you remember the most and what positives can you take away from it? You know, it's just the effort of the team, Allison. You know, these guys play hard every single week. You can question a lot of things about the team. You can question a lot about talent. You can question a lot about decision making. You cannot question these guys effort. They go out and they lay it on the line for all of us every single week. And it is hurtful and it is meaningful to this organization, to this program, to everybody that's been a part of it. Going all the way back to Dan Quinn, going to Arthur Blank. I mean, these guys play for all of those people and they are playing for me and I'm, I'm coaching for them. And I think it's vice versa across the board, just with the coaches and everybody in our building. Our whole organization is tied in. We're talking about people in our kitchen. We're talking about people that clean the building, the new people that just take that swab our noses every day want to win. So it is what it is, man. This is a family-like environment. Our culture here is, is as strong as it can ever be. Um, you have people cheering and rooting and absolutely going for it in the hardest way. Tanitra? Not to mention great reports, I was <laughs> Well, thanks, Coach. We appreciate that. How are you this morning? So what changes, uh, just kind of following up on Tori's question on Matt Hennessy, what changes might there be in maybe helping him to prepare to go against the Bucks? more running the 3-4 base defense versus, say, the prep that he had versus the Chiefs 4-3 package? Easy, Tanisha, with your homework over there. You know, like, you're going to be dealing with somebody over the top of your head now, Tanisha, right? So now you got to be ready to deal with those things. The snap is critical. To beat the guy to the punch is critical. To get off the ball is critical. It may not be as many second level blocks as you as you mainly would have versus a 4-3 look. You still will get those 4-3 looks. Obviously, when you go to your nickel or do you go to your blitz packages and you move those guys around. But Hennessy is far capable of doing those things. Um, it's something that we we drafted him in. We looked at him for it and to be able to do that thing. And the scouting department did a great job of, of sorting that out and all the skills that you need in order to play center for. So I'm just fired up to see and get him ready to go. You know, obviously hoping Alex will be ready to go and, and, and up to speed. Um, but we know those guys are all be ready and capable of doing the jobs. And a couple of weeks ago, the defense kept Cam Braid, Rob Gronkowski in check. And for the most part, you guys kept Travis Kelsey in check by sometimes going to be putting a corner on him for Sunday. So are you looking to maybe employ that kind of coverage again on Grok and, and Cam Braid? 
you know, Tanitra, you know, these guys, you got to do whatever you can to stop them. You know, you're talking about these tight ends these days that are big physical humans that can absolutely run routes and use their feet and get off blocks and get off uh, and get off press coverage. So you got to put everybody you can on them. You know, Foyer uh, brunts the load for covering some of these big tight ends most of the time. But every once in a while, you got to put a cone on them. Every once in a while, you got to put different looks at them and throw different jabs at them. So that's part of our package. That's part of what we do. So you'll definitely see a little bit of that. Kelsey? Just following up on what you said about Fowler, what exactly hasn't been good enough? And what would you say to the people that wonder if his 11 and a half sacks last year was just a one year wonder type of deal? You know, um, I wouldn't respond to any hypotheticals. That would be the first thing I wouldn't do. Um, he got 11 and a half sacks. So, you know, a one year deal would be something that would just be in a falsehood. You know, he has come out this year. What hadn't been good enough? He hadn't had his sack numbers. In order to play in this profession, you got to be known for something. And if you're going to be known for getting sacks, you got to go out and get sacks. And you got to be consistent and you got to be consistent with your effort. And right now, you know, he just hadn't had the numbers that you want to have and that would relate to all the things that he's brought to us and that he's able to do. So he'd be disappointed in what happened this season. Um, and I, I got a feeling he will look forward to next year and absolutely getting after people. In his, game for, in his game, for a matter of fact. Sorry, Gab. Sorry, Barack. We got time for one more follow up. Anybody? d -Leg, you just dying to ask a question. Yeah, Look at you, that sweet hat on. Yeah. yeah, I was waiting. I was waiting. I was trying to give him another shot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you got to do to make sure number 95 doesn't get loose on y'all? Uh, you know, um, you go out and you play the game. You do whatever you need to do, and you got to block that guy. You know, obviously, um, it is what it is. You know, you go play the game, and you play the game to win, period. Thank you. 